In March 2020, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau learned his wife Sophie had tested positive for the coronavirus and moved with his family to his country retreat in the Laurentian Mountains outside Ottawa. In the parlance of the day, the Prime Minister was self-isolating, but he also began holding daily press conferences outside his cottage, two meters away from reporters. That is, we had here the Prime Minister's two bodies, his governing body, still able to issue diktats and fatherly advice, and his physical body, potentially infected with the disease. Prime Minister Trudeau was not the only politician distancing himself from the media, as shown by the New York Times photograph from May 9, 2020, in my opening slide, depicting journalists standing back from Larry Ludlow, director of the U.S. Economic Council, or in Daniel Defoe's A Journal of the Plague Year, in which he describes, apropos of the 1665 London plague, my Lord Mayor had a low gallery built on purpose in his hall, where he stood a little removed from the crowd when any complaint came to be heard, that he might appear with as much safety as possible. And two, as workers around the world retreated to work from home, we had two bodies, one on the internet, attempting to attend meetings on Zoom or answer the metastasizing number of emails or conduct virtual counseling sessions, and the other our physical body, attending to children or elderly parents, cramped into a, an apartment with one's partner working, perhaps nearby. But this is nonetheless a relatively privileged position. There are many who cannot afford such a virtual body, whether frontline workers in hospitals delivering food, those crammed into favelas, refugee camps, reserves, or prisons. The splitting of the subject into the two bodies of the internet or the two bodies of the coronavirus, I argue, provides a real-time case study for understanding the social conditions of psychoanalysis today. <laughs>